Okay, let's give him a um, few more seconds. And if he's not up, we would have to introduce the next speaker. Okay, um, I think on this note, we would have to introduce the next speaker. Then once uh, Mr. Umar is back, after the next speaker is done, he can now take up from there. Okay, okay, I just received uh, a message from him that he is joining me back. Okay, so let's give him a few more seconds. Let's give him a few more seconds. So if we still have um, any other question um, as regards um, Inaira, we can drop it in the chat box while we wait for while we wait for Mr. Omar to, to join back, all right? Hi everyone, sorry, my internet got cut off. Can you hear me? Hello, I'm Star. Yes, yeah, so welcome back. Me? Sorry about that. Just going to take this up. Can anybody see this? Yes, please. Okay, so we'll just pick it up from here. Like I was saying, this is our mission. We're trying to build a financial system that creates the condition for prosperity for everyone. And it's kind of what gets us out of bed every morning. Then um, here you, you see when you, when, when you look at the image on the screen, you find one of the co-founders of Celo, Rene Rainsberg with um, somebody from Andreessen Horowitz. Andreessen Horowitz is a, a venture capital firm that is one of the early backers of the Scylla protocol. And there's an ideology within that ecosystem that to solve the issues that we have in the world today, we need to kind of pull together some of the best brains that the world has to have. So this is true when it comes to the future of money as we're trying to re-engineer what money can be, trying to um, reimagine the future of money. And with this, we need to have some of the brightest minds within the ecosystem. And this is why Celo is open source, so that we can be able to collaborate with as many individuals as we possibly can, as opposed to something that is closed off without having any regard to anybody else, which is not ideal for people who are trying to um, build a financial system that creates conditions that can enable every, everybody to flourish. So this is kind of the gist of what we're doing. Next, we're gonna talk about the Celo blockchain, which is um, ably illustrated by, there's a reason why there's a, an image of a mobile phone here, as I'll explain in the slides that follow. Celo is a mobile fast blockchain, and not just a mobile fast blockchain, it's the first of its kind, the first mobile, blockchain if i could say because it's built from the ground up as a full stack solution that is natively built 
to have a native mobile fast experience. So everything that is built within the cellular ecosystem is, is supposed to be functional on the mobile device. And this is very relevant if you're trying to build a financial system that is going to be global because as it stands today, the number one driver for financial inclusion in the world is the mobile device, the mobile phone. And it's only logical that you build something that is mobile first as opposed to something that is not mobile first because that will be something that will need someone to use a desktop or a laptop to be able to connect to the system, which is not really ideal. So mobile phones are really penetrating every single aspect of the world. And this is very true in places like Sub-Saharan Africa where financial inclusion levels are low. And the mobile phone is doing a lot of, of the heavy lifting and as far as getting people um, financially included into the financial system via mobile money. So this was informed by user research that was able to inform the team and during the early days of Salon, this is around 2017, that um, the, the, the folks were able to do some field research in various parts of the world, whereby they, they were able to get an, an opportunity to understand the user insights and what they would want to see in a financial system that is global and works for them more. What they were able to understand was that something that is mobile first would be ideal, and it's very similar to what mobile money is, and this is kind of the, the thinking behind how they were building it. So on the technical side, Celo is, is essentially a fork of Ethereum, because from how, the way we understand it, the founders were thinking about building on Ethereum, but Ethereum had its own issues with scaling at the time, and they opted to simply fork the code base and build a new blockchain from that. And from that, we're able to have the Celo blockchain as a standalone proof of stake public blockchain. By proof of stake, it's the, it's the alternative to a proof of work chain, whereby you have validators who stake a portion of the native asset to be able to validate these blocks and change the state of the blockchain. And this proof of stake blockchain runs a Byzantine fault tolerance model, consensus algorithm, which has enabled Celo be a fast chain with single block finality. So with the, with the BFT consensus um, al algorithm, you're able to understand that the, you, you, you do not get more sure as the blocks come, as each block that gets confirmed is final. That block cannot be reorganized, which is, the, which is kind of a problem with various proof of work chains. And you see that uh, when it comes to proof of work chains, the more time that a blockchain um, takes or the more blocks that come after a block, the sure you get. Because before you have at least, say for the case of Bitcoin, before you have six blocks in a, um, that, 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 that come after a block that you're trying to look at, the transactions within that chain are not that certain. But when it comes to chains that are running under a BFT consensus algorithm, it's final block, whether it, it's, it's one block final times, and the block that is confirmed is the final set of the chain, and that won't be reorganized, which has really helped Celo be um, a very fast blockchain, as you don't have to worry about your transactions being reversed because you, you didn't wait. And this is coupled into the ideals there. What makes Celo ideal for payments is that it takes five seconds to propagate a block. So if you are sending a payment from a, a cell address to another cell address, maybe you're paying for coffee somewhere, it takes you five seconds to complete that payment and it's final. Once, once, it, once it reflects on the other side, it has been included in, 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 in a block and that block is final. So you, you, don't, need to, you don't need to wait to, to, to get more confirmation. Each block that gets confirmed is the final state of the, of the chain and that really helps us in as far as payments go. Because under payments, we don't want to have a, a situation whereby whereby a, a merchant has to wait to verify that now the transaction that, that um, has occurred is not going to change and it's going to be the final state of this chain. In terms of gas, Celo is currently quite e efficient with gas. Uh, we don't have the issues of um, high gas fees as the network is still pretty robust. It's, 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 it's not fully utilized and this is why we need to get more applications and builders and more adoption to come in so that we can be able to use up more of the space. But nonetheless, the cost of gas is intended to remain low. And this is a, um, a feature of the Celo blockchain. And then Celo is borderless as uh, various blockchains. Um, you do not need to have any permits or previous access to use the Celo network. It can work in various countries without having 
the issue of being censored. So there are no borders in this. You don't need to, like kind of the, the issues we have with mobile money today, whereby you cannot send money across borders easily. It has to have, you have to have like your telecommunications provider has to have an arrangement with another teleco so that you can be able to send the money across borders. Celo doesn't have this. If I have a Valora wallet in Uganda, I can send some dollars to Batley in Nigeria and it, it, it will be like as if we're in the same room because it doesn't really recognize borders. So if th this is kind of the gist of the presentation. If you take only one thing away from this presentation, let it be that Celo is the first mobile first blockchain. And this is kind of the key identifier for the Celo network. You may have various chains that are doing awesome things in the crypto space, but you find that Celo is the first of its kind that it's building with a mobile first approach and the work that we've been able to do really does show in as far as um, creating awareness and getting to the people at the base of the pyramid goes. So Celo is the mobile first blockchain. This is the key identifier. And here we have six unique features of the Celo blockchain. I'll just walk through them one by one. There's a phone number link. This is, you, um, you, you can be able to map your telephone number from your telephone uh, provider to an address on the Celo uh, pl platform. This is one of the features of being a mobile first uh, platform. So you can be able to map a number from MTN, from M M um, Safaricom, from Airtel, from Tigo. You simply go through an, attest an attestation service on chain and this is mapped to an address on the Celo platform. And once the mapping is done, at this point, people can send you Celo assets to your phone number without having to even know what your address is. So it's like your phone number becomes your identity. If I wanted to send Batley or Michael some um, Celo dollars, some CUSD, as long as I have your contacts within, the, uh, within my contact list, like I would look up someone, I wanted to send an SMS, and you, over, uh, you actually get verified on the, on, on the Valora app, which we'll see later on. Valora is kind of the de facto wallet within the Celo ecosystem. So it's, it's, it's easy to hold Celo assets on your phone simply by downloading this wallet from the Play Store or the App Store. It's called Valora. And you have the Valora, I have the Valora app. I simply, I, I simply look you up in, in my contacts and I, send, I can send you Celo dollars, I can send you Celo, I can send you Celo euros. And I would send you an SMS or, or a text, but only cheaper. Because if I, if I was sending um, badly a text from, from Uganda here, it, would be, it, it wouldn't be as cheap as sending maybe a, a WhatsApp. But when I'm sending funds across the border, it, 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 would, it would be as easy as sending a text, only cheaper, per se. That's, that's, that's the, the, the first um, identifier for the solo platform, phone number mapping. And actually, for the case of security, the, the, it's not like the protocol maps your phone number, it's rather it maps a hash of your phone number. So once the hash is on chain, the, the hash gets mapped on chain and you cannot work backwards to understand which phone number this is. So anybody looking at the Celo network wouldn't be able to work out, figure out the identities attached to these addresses on the network. So there's that kind of aspect of inbuilt privacy, yet you also get the um, the packs of having digital identity in that regard. Then there's on-chain governance as well. And um, this is something that is privy to various um, chains, but also Celo takes it to the next level in that anybody who holds the native asset, native asset being Celo, can be able to participate in governance decisions. Say maybe somebody wants to propose, want to increase the, the, the block size, want to increase the gas limit, things like that. You can be able to cast your vote from the comfort of your home without having to go and line up somewhere and cast a ballot like we do with the general elections. So, Hello? Right, thank you. Um, like I was saying, on-chain governance works that way. You can be able to have your say on the direction of the um, building of the Celo platform, how the Celo grows, whether it grows, just, just by um, casting your vote using using the Celo um, 
that you hold. So if you if you hold this native asset, you can always look out for these governance proposals that come. They are always announced. You can follow um, within the Celo ecosystem either on Discord, Twitter, or just going to to the 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 Celo Facebook page, and you can be able to understand which proposals are coming up and when, and you can vote on this. Then it's a scalable proof of stake platform, like I said. The validators can there's actually a proposal to increase them. They actually increase them from 100. I think now they're 120 around that. And um, it, this, this is also done by on-chain governance. The community voted. It wasn't like one person sat in a room and they decided to increase the number of validators. But the validator base is always flexible. And you can find that these, these, these validators can always be expanded so that we can also get more decentralization. And like I said, the blocks take five seconds to build. So it's a very fast process. And these um, blocks also take whether the validators take turns validating for the network in a period of 24 hours. So every 24 hours, there's an election and you get a new validator set. So we keep on having this democracy and decentralized, decentralization in as far as running the solar platform goes. Then we can also pay gas fees in multiple currencies. So it's not only tied to holding the cello, the native asset, which is like, for example, on the Ethereum chain, whereby you have to pay gas fees in Ether. And if Ether spikes, of course, gas fees are going to spike. Here, if I'm sending badly one CUSD, I don't need to have cello in my wallet to send that those funds. I simply, the, the gas fees will be paid in the currency that I'm sending you. So it is extremely helpful you know, as far as helping us get to people who don't need to understand about gas and all of these complications, whereby you are telling people to hold one asset to send another asset, that complexity was removed. And Celo was able to do this from day one, which is really um, keeping in, keeping true with what we saw from the field research and how mobile money works. Then there's a fast client, or rather there's a fast thing for ultra light clients, which actually helps, um, helps, um, mobile phones sync with the network in record time. So each mobile phone that has say the Valora wallet in there, within that you have an actual light client. So it's not just a, an application that is on the cello network. Within that application, you have an ultra light client that has a portion of the cello blockchain history. So it syncs and you cannot be, so if you're, if you're accepting payments in Valora, you have real time updates to the chain the set of the chain, so you don't have to worry about somebody um, spending money that they already spent, because that that is a problem that does not really exist on the cellular network, because everything is synced. Even somebody just opening up the app today will be able to get all the transactions, or at least verifiable evidence of the transactions from day one to the day that they have downloaded the app. And this is very effective in as far as getting to um, adoption goes. Because if you have these ultra light clients, you're able to spin up these, um, the, these um, new applications easier without having the hassle of waiting for a day for your phone to sync with the network. So you download the app today, like Valora, there's a client in there that is ultra light. It will not consume your data because that is one of the issues that comes up with this because blockchains are heavy and all of this. So only portions of what, what you need to know are downloaded and all of this happens in the background. So the average, the average user won't even know that the application is syncing with the chain, but what is happening in the back is that you're actually syncing with the actual chain and you get a, a, an executive summary of what is there. And as you can see here, it works on even the, sim the simplest of smartphones with 700 thousand times faster than any other chain. So any other chain out there that is trying to have a light client, Celo is 700,000 times faster than the best of them. And this has been proven because there's, even right now as we speak, we've been trying to, 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 to make it even lighter with a light client called Plumo. And just to talk about Plumo, Plumo is a light client protocol that is supposed to make Celo even faster to sync by decreasing the amount of information that a light client needs to consume off the main chain. And if you decrease this information, you kind of get a balance between having a good state of what the chain looks like without having any misinformation or scammers that could be able to come in there and give you a wrong version of the chain. So it's a very interesting process that is happening. And right now we are at the phase of multi-party computation, whereby you have various random entities 
nodes on the network that are running various equations to add some entropy or um, I would say randomness to the, to the service. And once it's done, then Pluma will go live. Then these ultralight clients will sync even faster with even lesser data. So the, the average person in a village somewhere in Nigeria or Uganda or Kenya won't need to know all the complexities that are happening. All they will see is something that is very similar to mobile money. And they don't know, they won't even need to know that it's running on a blockchain unless they want they got curious. Then the last aspect here is carbon negative. Yes, Celo is the first carbon negative blockchain. And this was done by a collab, uh, through a collaboration with uh, Project REN. Now, Project REN is a project that works in um, carbon, uh, actually on, on, on um, planting forests off chain. So they receive a portion of the block rewards every day, which is 0.1% that they give, that, that, that they, this is actually, it's, it's part of the protocol from day one. They have an address on chain that receives these rewards, 0.1% of all the epoch rewards, rewards that, the, all, that all the validators get in a day. And these rewards are used to offset the carbon that the validators used to run to secure the Celo network. So Celo cleans up after itself, if I can say that. We do not leave the, 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 the world dirty and we actually, we don't just clean because that would be carbon neutral because we just clean what we what we um what we pollute uh, in terms of ca um, carbon um, emissions. But we go even further. We clean more than that. So if if we are releasing say uh, one ton of carbon per day, would be uh, cleaning up with one point five um I would, I would say uh, one point five ton. 1.5 tons of deductions in terms of carbon emissions. So this is done by planting of trees. And there's a lot of exciting work that is happening in, in as far as the climate um, 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 initiative goes. So this is just one of it, but Celo is a carbon negative blockchain. So these are six of the, very, of the unique features that Celo has and individuals would find them very unique. If you are conscious about the climate, as everyone is, getting more these days. We know climate change is happening. We're seeing it with our eyes, floods everywhere, record temperatures, ice caps melting, sea levels are rising. Celo is very aware of this and we shall be able to see how this is playing out as well. Um, then Celo as a blockchain, as a wallet, as a source of digital money, this is how the end user would interface with the platform. Backend, there's a blockchain running. You can have an application on top, which would be a wallet like Valora. And within the wallet, you have digital money that you can send from phone to phone and create your own economies that hopefully can be able to create a better financial system for all. Celo is mobile, Celo is open, and Celo is real, as it has real people at the core and new people first. So Celo is, is not the average um, I would say a project that simply cares about the price going up. What drives the ecosystem around Celo is real world use cases with having a real world impact that can actually change the world that we have today into a better place. If you look at this, if you're, if you're kind of looking at the Celo universe, you can see kind of what is happening within, within inside the, the Celo universe. There would be three entities that I can pick on right now: the Celo Foundation, C Labs, which is under the, um, which is funded by Celo Foundation, and also Valora, which is an independent company as it is now. Valora spun out of C Labs, but now they were able to raise twenty million in um, seed funding. Now they have their own operation, and the, we hope that this funding can be able to get them to create more applications that can help uh, more adoption of Celo on a global scale. And you can see there are stars under the, in the Valora ecosystem, Mola, which is a DeFi protocol for lending, and um, Impact Market, which is a decentralized universal basic income, and Kosali, which is a micro work platform. You have Ubeswap there that Michael will talk about a bit. Then for the case of C-Labs within our universe, we have various um, collaborators, Keiko that are working on uh, network security, and be safe, and keep, keep that issues the TBTC, essentially a version of Bitcoin that you can have on the Celo platform that is pegged one to one to the to um, one TBT is issued against one bit one BTC that is held in trust, but you get to have this uh, on the Celo network that can 
be able to benefit from the features of the Celo platform, such as low gas fees and extremely low block times, things that you would essentially struggle with on Bitcoin. For the Solo Foundation, you have various funding initiatives such as Polychain, Ecos the Ecosystem Fund, and um, Solo Community Fund. These um, are heavily involved in as, in as far as funding initiatives that are building on Solo education, um, ecosystem tools, awareness, low, uh, lowering barriers to entry, anything like that. As we've seen the various um, funding rounds from the uh, foundation itself as well. Solo Camp, an initiative that is best to kind of fast track in, um, developers and entrepreneurs building on Celo to get funding, to get mentorship and to get um, guidance on how they can be able to fast track the initiatives. Flurry is also another venture fund that is within the Celo ecosystem. So all these stars are coming out from something that was just a spec, but now it's very awesome to see all of this new infrastructure being developed. And I hope that we can be able to draw it further and get more awareness from what we're doing. Then at a glance, you have the cellular ecosystem. And this is kind of a, a display of the, of, the, of the network strength, per se. Currently speaking, we have around 45 million transactions since day one. This is more than Cosmos, Polkadot, and Nia combined. So it, this, this shows that we're not uh, simply having crypto on the exchanges, but the crypto is actually doing a lot more within world world use cases. And this is why you're seeing various transactions happening. Ecosystem, you have 238 builders within the solo ecosystem, people building various applications, DeFi payments, nonprofits like Ramin and Care, along those, then a thousand builders and developers specifically who are uh, trying to build something within the solo ecosystem. Uh, over 1 million unique addresses in the solo network. The Alliance has now 100 and actually it should be 150 members right now. And we are actively engaged in 113 countries globally. This is a screenshot of the build activity that is happening around the world. These are individuals. Each dot represents builders in a given country. And you can see how much activity is happening in terms of people building on the solo ecosystem, 133 countries around the world, and they all have their various contributions from as far as Australia up to the Europe and North America, as you can see the, the, the dots on the chat there. Solo is an open platform, supposed to make financial tools accessible to anyone with a mobile phone. That is the angle that we are trying to drive. I'll look at the Celo assets briefly here, Celo dollar, Celo euro, and Celo. So you have these assets that are pegged to their respective fiat currencies, Celo dollar pegged to the US dollar, Celo euro pegged to the, uh, to the European euro, and you can move them on the internet for as low as 0 0.01 in fees. So this compared to moving, having a, a traditional bank wire from Europe, say to Africa, is unheard of. Of course, we didn't move that money for anything less, less than $50 or $20, depending on, on, on your bank there. So here you can move these assets over the internet for as low as $0.01. That's, that's, that's huge. And as far as um, lib, um, liberalizing fin finance goes, some of the benefits of a stable coin, of course, it's borderless money. You don't need to worry about, <laughs> I would say, the, the interconnection fees, like you have funded said mobile money from here to um, Tanzania or here to South Africa, would need to have some interconnections there, and there would be some middlemen in there, and they would actually take a cut at every every point. So that is something that you don't have to worry about in the cellular ecosystem. If you get all the advantages of cryptocurrency, security, flexibility, privacy, without the volatility that comes with it, as we can see, stable coins are stable, they do not fluctuate. Meaning if you put it there and do nothing, it should be the same, the same price it is today. It should be the same price it will be tomorrow or even in two years. And this can be programmed with smart contracts, meaning if B2B wanted to have maybe a giveaway, they could be able to, you could be able to program a smart contract that has members of the community do a task. And once the task is completed, they get some stable coins in their Valora wallet. That could be one application, something that you cannot easily do with cash. And this is a huge step in as far as things like cash transfer programs go, that you can be able to program money. That is um, the direction of finance that we need to be seeing. Then Celo is the native asset of the blockchain. It's used for governance, like I said. If you hold Celo, 
you can be able to vote against governance proposals. So you can get your voice heard on the platform. So some of the notable owners of Silo, we have PayU, a huge merchant um, payment processor, a, a huge merchant network that also doubles as a payment processor across the world, various operations. And A16Z and recent Horowitz, that is Polychain Capital, Gen, uh, General Catalyst, Dosha Telecom, Jack Dorsey, Reed Hoffman, and of course, our very own bit to big proud owners of the cello. Um, there's some use cases here that we can see, how, and of them just looking at the alliance in, in general. So the cello alliance for prosperity is an umbrella body of like-minded entities that have come together to work on um, building cello to, 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 to get to the next stage, basically. They leverage their core competencies from various fields like finance, um, remittances, education, lending, venture capital, telecommunications, um, wallet security. Everybody brings what they can to the table and they're all working towards enabling sellers prosperity in their own unique ways. And um, they are global with a reach of 700, over 700 million individuals across the world. So their reach is, is really far and they've really been a fundamental pillar in our success this far. And recently the Alliance, we, we, we got PayU first, Opera and Deutsche Telekom joining, which were kind of huge, actually not kind of, but they were huge wins for us in as far as getting validity and um, I will say cred credibility in, in very many eyes goes. So I also, it goes without saying that B2Big is a proud um, Alliance member and also helping us work on various initiatives such as this very event that has me speaking about CELO. Benefits of the Alliance, you get a chance to meet like-minded people. It's a space to build and shape improvements on CELO because we have, they have regular meets, a platform for special programs and events. You can access education and support and opportunities to kind of grow your network. You get to rub shoulders with various institutions and like-minded individuals. So it's a, a, a very huge, um, initiative within the cellular ecosystem. I want to talk about initiatives that we currently have within the ecosystem. And currently there's a theme for DeFi for the people. DeFi stands for decentralized finance. And we're trying to do it the cellular way by bringing DeFi to the mobile phone. So cellular being a mobile phone, whether a mobile fast uh, blockchain platform, we only thought that we can be able to take it a notch higher by bringing decentralized finance to the folks near us, people who wouldn't know, normally want to, know, wouldn't normally know anything about DeFi or even have a clue how on where to start from, so that individuals can have this option as well. So they can be able to learn, understand that you can compound your, your stable coin holdings by maybe staking in a liquidity pool on Ubiswap or Mobius, depending on your preference. So this is an initiative that is currently going when it has its own domain, as you can see the URL I put up there, defi for the, for the people.org. Go there, currently there's a hackathon happening, but within the hackathon there are various tracks that you can be able to um, get in if you're a builder, if you're a designer, if you're somebody who wants to um, develop something new for the cellular ecosystem that would have a mobile first approach, please consider joining this as the hackathon is still going on. And uh, we look forward to seeing various contributions from um, great minds across the world. In terms of resources, um, you can always um, go to Twitter and uh, search for built on Celo. It has a very, very up-to-date list of applications that are currently built on Celo. The Celo reserved so that you can see what is back in the Celo assets because each Celo asset in circulation, whether it's a Celo dollar or a Celo euro, is backed by a reserve of other digital assets. So there's no fiat in this equation. It's Crypto back in crypto, if, if I could say that. So within the reserve, you have Bitcoin, you have Ethereum, you have DAI, you have DAI, and now you also have, you have of course, you have Celo, the native asset, which is kind of the 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 huge, the, the biggest portion of, of the of the reserve. Now you also have some carbon credit tokens from Moss.Earth. So you have some um, because, like I said in the beginning, Celo is very conscious about the environment. It's it's been on the radar from day one, you have some carbon credit tokens at a rate of, I think around 0.5% of the reserve currently. But going forward, there is something called the Climate Initiative, 
actually it's, it's a climate collective that is bringing together various entities to kind of think wholesomely about the environment and also work with Silo to get the to get the um, more uh, awareness about the environment out there. So with the climate collective, there is a bold um, initiative to have over around forty percent of the Silo reserve to contain tokenized rainforest. So you can imagine that tokenizing a rainforest and bring it onto the blockchain. So it's a very huge engineering lift. It's something that we're very excited about, but want to see it happen. And there's a, currently a call for all bright minds, all developers that have um, expertise in building this to kind of work together with various entities from around the world to make it a reality. So within the next four years, we want to see that 40% of this reserve is made up of tokenized rainforest, which can really protect us in as far as um, taking carbon out of the atmosphere and reducing on the emissions that we do have. So you check that out at um, the climatecollective.org as well. You can also go to Celo Hub, which is kind of a hub that can show you network activity on Celo as well. Then the traditional Celo Discord, Celo Telegram, and the Celo Forum can also be very good resources if you wanted to understand how the ecosystem is and find like-minded people to um, collaborate with. More resources here, white papers from various things such as the Celo framework itself, stability protocol that ensures that the stable coins are not going to fluctuate and also um, influencing the velocity of central bank digital currencies, like Bartley was talking about the in era there. That's, there's a very good piece on that. And also we have a video series here, like you can see, uh, Dr. Marcus Frank, who was also hosted by a bit too big a while ago, talking about um, stable coins. You can meet the team. You can um, read about research on stable coins, um, stability as well, and also managing financial crime, because there is an economic team within the C-Labs ecosystem that is really doing a great job in as far as getting the economics that works out of the door. Then technical documentation, we have a host at Celo, uh, docs that is docs.celo.org but i'll share this presentation with um the uh, with the host and they can be able to, um, to um, distribute it among the b2b community and yeah uh, when it comes to Celo, think of payments made simple and that's pretty much it i will take any questions at this point Okay, um, Stauma, thank you so much for that session. It was really, really um, educative and actually loaded. Thank you for that. But from my end, okay, anyone in the house, do we have any question? We can leave in the chat section. But from my end, I just have um, just um, a simple question from here. Um, Stauma, what is the difference between, the major difference between CUSD and uh, USDT? And why should people purchase or get CUSDT. So you see USD, which is CELO, and that is something that we at B2B, we do have, all right? So they can always get this from us. It's either at our, our account at 25 at Uganda, or they can always start up any of the admin or go to our website, all right? So can you hear me? Because it seems, okay, you can hear me. So what is the, the major difference and why should people purchase CUSD and not USDT? Um, thank you very much for that question, Bartley. And it's it really ties into what uh, is at the core of the cellular ecosystem. So you have um, CUSD, the cellular dollar, and you have uh, USDT, Tether. When you look at them from a glance, your USDT has volume in billions of dollars on any given day, yet um, CUSD has volume that is in tens of, of, of millions of dollars per se currently now. So someone looking at this would think that uh, uh, USDT Tether is, is kind of a de facto big boy. But then you, when, you, when you drill it down to the actual bare minimums, USDT has had issues. Uh, okay, they, let me talk about what they are um, at their fundamentals. USDT is a fiat-backed stablecoin. It's been around for several years now. Yet CUSD is a, an algorithmic stablecoin that is backed by a reserve of, um, of, a, of various crypto, current, crypto assets, including Bitcoin, Tether, Ethereum, um, Celo, and now um, carbon credits from Moss. 
So if for, for somebody who's climate conscious, just, just from, from the get-go, just having that 0.5% of um, carbon credits in a reserve that is backing the money that I use is already a win. Because when it comes to the side of tether, they do not have um, anything that is kind of from the regenerative economy. They don't have any green backing per se. They have backing from the green bar, which is the dollar in, in the reserve there, along with some other deposits, but it's purely fiat there. So somebody looking for something that is purely crypto, purely dynamic, would want to consider um, CUSD in, 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 in place of Tether. And also, when it comes to audits, Tether being a, a fiat-backed um, stablecoin, you cannot really audit that they have the reserve that they say they have, and we have seen issues with Tether in the past, whereby they had issues with accurate reporting, along, um, along with Bit, Bitfinex, with um, the Southern District of New York, whereby it came to light that the, 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 the actual fact was that one Tether is not exactly backed by one US dollar in a bank account somewhere that came to light, which is expected because this is a fiat collateralized stablecoin. So fiat is not on chain. Fiat is held in a physical bank vault somewhere. So at any one point, we can't tell if at midnight when a, on a certain day somebody took out one billion and brought it back the following day. You can't see that because this is not something that is on chain. Now on the other side, the cello, everything is on chain. You can be able to query the smart contract. You can query the addresses that issue this um, stablecoin into existence. And you can be able to actually see how much is in circulation because everything is on chain. The cello is the cello dollar is on is on chain along with the reserve being on chain. So the backing is easier to track. So there's no need for even anybody in the community can actually audit this by themselves, seeing how how much is in circulation, how much is in the reserve in real time. Even if you do it at 3 a.m. in the morning, that's easy. So this is different. This is different from somebody trying to audit tether, which you can't know if they actually have the dollars in the bank to back this up because they are like you like you know in traditional banking the assumption is that not everybody is going to claim their dollars at a go so this is something else that you'd want to consider when, when you when you look at that then when it comes to the the issues of of moving this around cusd is native to the cello blockchain so you get to benefit from low gas costs benefit from fast block times then depending on the chain that you're moving your usdt on you will be subject to various indices in getting that uh, crypto from point A to point B. I know right, right now, no one is really moving much tether on um, Ethereum because of the gas fees, and they're really moving a lot of it on um, Tron. But then given how, how individuals feel about the various networks, it may be easier to kind of get a liking for CUSD. Because CUSD has a mobile first approach. It's not something that you need to hold in a MetaMask wallet all the time. You can be able to move with it within within your uh, Valora wallet, and you can be able to make payments at various merchants across the world, along with some other um, merchants within the uh, pipeline that we should be able to announce soon enough. So, in a in a in a nutshell, it comes down to practicality and how people feel about the ethics of these um, uh, various stable coins, the fiat collateralized stable coins, and a stable coin that is backed by crypto on chain fully aud auditable by anybody who wants to look at the reserve and you can be able to um, get the preferences out there so that's that's kind of how, how I would say that and also to to actually make this even more interesting um, folks can be able to create their own CUSD by interacting with the reserve so within Valora there is a mechanism that can enable you to send sell of the native asset, and that can be send cello and you can swap it out for CUSD. So essentially you're creating your own CUSD. So on the side of Tether, it may be a bit different because the bank account, um, the, the, the fear that you're sending either by debit card or physical bank, you don't know if that is actually going to sit there, but here you can get to experience the workings of a blockchain from the comfort of a, of a, of a smartphone. So cello is more practical, it's more real, like I said, mobile, open, real, as opposed to what Tether is. And we see, we actually know that the, the majority of Tether is used for trading on exchanges. Celo is, is really moving out of the exchanges and into the communities causing real world impact. That's what I would say in a nutshell, that could be a nutshell, badly. 
that was explanatory enough. Thank you for that, Omar. So um, on this note, I'll be introducing to us um, the next speaker, which is our very own CEO, person of Mr. K uh, Michael Kibero. All right, so Mr. Michael, you can have the floor, please. Welcome. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you for this awesome presentation, Uma. Well done. Wow. Um, today, I think Uma really took it uh, nicely from, from a low level that even me, I can understand. <laughs> um, I really appreciate his time and his, his, I can really see his increased knowledge uh, from the time we started to where we are now. I'm seeing he's talking another language. Uh, awesome. And um, I want to make some remarks. I don't really want to rush. I really don't want to rush because um, there was a lot of um, topics he spoke about. I know we have the DeFi part, but I, I don't want to rush that either. So I really want to get to some remarks from my said, which, you know, for me, it makes me rethink uh, again. You see, I've been in the industry for over 20 years in, 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 in the different technologies when it comes to um, I mean, I, 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 when I do, was doing IT, we, we started doing a C64. I don't even know if you know those stuff, uh, LPs and tapes and videotapes and all that. And then we came the Amiga and that was awesome. And there was no screen that had like colors like today. There were just dots <laughs> that were moving and we called it games. And uh, now when I look back and, and look where we are, I, I'm just always amazed at seeing what power alone you have in your phone, what is possible via your phone. I mean, you can carry your laptop around. I remember when I bought my first laptop, it was almost $5,000 and it had, um, I, I don't remember the, the sound, card, something which is awesome sound system. That was the most important part for me uh, on, on the laptop. But Haman Kadon, Haman Kadon sound system. And it was, I mean, everywhere I went, I was, I was the hero, but today you will not be one. <laughs> so. The technology advancement is just, to me, something that I can't stop being amazed at. And looking at where we are today and where we are growing into, when I say we are growing into, I'm talking about the youth of today that are growing into. If you show them a tape, they even wonder, was this uh, something of Stone Age? And so, and I think we shouldn't ignore some of these awesome concepts that are there today. I didn't put on my video. If I, you want me to put it on, I can put. But um, back to the point, let me put on the video because I saw all of the beautiful people. Uh, I saw uh, Uma Bartley, so let me also steal a little bit the spot even if I can't come near to it. Um, but in short, what I'm just trying to put here is, I, I'm amazed to see what technology is doing uh, today what is possible and what levels we have reached. Um, and one of the things Omar was talking about, and there were different things he said, uh, he spoke about, I needed to make even notes myself, and I like to make notes in general. But when we talk about blockchain, we're talking about Bitcoin, we're talking about 12 years back. I mean, my oldest daughter is almost that age. Is that age actually. So I can't imagine how young the technology actually is, but how far it has already taken us. Um, so Bitcoin first, then we got Ethereum, which did basically automation with smart contracts and other things, but Bitcoin really brought the value that you could exchange value on the internet. Um, and then we had a few years, different technology and every blockchain tries to solve something. And then we got Salo. And I used to tell, even Uma knows me for it. I used to tell even Uma, you know what, guys? When I look at Sailor in detail, I think you guys are not presenting it good enough <laughs> because I will see the potential Sailor has. I will see what Ethereum has done, but I will see what actually Sailor can do. And I will see a lot, a lot of opportunities. So when we start Bitcoin, when I started, I was actually, you know, it was all about anonymous and getting things really privacy and all that, very privacy focused in the beginning, especially. 
so the usage was different. We didn't have phone wallets and all those things. Um, Ethereum things definitely look different, but even this whole thing of smart contract, no one really got it right. And so um, the issue with Ethereum, which is a great blockchain has been the costs, extremely high costs to the point that if you want to transfer $10 on Ethereum, you can't, you basically can't because the fees will eat about $30 of that. And there was time when it will even eat $300 in transaction, which is madness for what it actually is supposed to be solving. But many great applications have been built on Ethereum. So I think for the last three years, Ethereum is trying to become a better blockchain and they're doing great work towards that. But surprisingly, Salo came out of nowhere <laughs> in my eyes and just solved what Ethereum has been trying to solve for many years. Um, and basically went from proof of work, which takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of comp computational power, and it went basically into um, proof of stake, where you have to have a saying in it by buying some of the tokens, and then you can basically have higher performance usually in it, and so on and so forth. But for me, that's not really what Celo did. And that's why I'm trying to comment here a bit longer on it. What actually Celo did, and let me tell you about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a private key and usually you generate on your computer or any other computer-like system or you print it, it's still generated before that. Um, so you're holding the private key in your wallet and you have a software for it. Um, other blockchain have tried some other similar things by, I don't know, using some of them tried to use emails and so on and so forth. But what Celo actually did, they said mobile first. Mobile first means it needs only a phone number, not even a computer. It just needs a phone number. And that was also new to me, uh, Uma, that it's actually hashed. I think I saw it, but I did not digest it back then. Um, the phone numbers are hashed. My question is, are they also kind of like uh, random, like salt, or can I actually put in my Uganda numbers and then generate them back more or less, which normally is a hard process, but with 6 billion, at least I have a defined uh, scope. Um, but you just need your phone number and then you basically have your private key, your wallet set with that. And to me, that's amazing in general. Then from there, the other side, what Uma said, which really uh, struck me a bit, um, was the SMS. <laughs> I can send an SMS from Uganda to Nigeria, and the SMS will cost me more money than if I sent a transaction from A to B. That one is um, surprising to me and should also strike you somewhere. Like if you sent a WhatsApp message, even a WhatsApp message could cost you more in some of the Western, you hear me right, Western countries where data sometimes is unnecessary expensive, but also in the African, where we also have it partly unnecessary uh, expensive. So it is $0.001 cent. Any amount, if you move 1 billion, it is still that amount. And that's to me amazing. In five seconds, this, is, this beats, I mean, every other purpose. So I want to excite you. Why I'm saying many words on this, I want to excite you on Celo because what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing and Uma keeps adding more stuff <laughs> is making me just amazed. Let's look briefly at uh, one, two things here um, while, I'm, while I'm trying to wind up my, my area because we have already gone over time. So I prefer we do part two and then uh, we go deeper in, in, in the areas that I had, uh, that we wanted to also look at. I, I hope you can all see my, I hope you can all see my screen. Please confirm. Yes, please. Yeah, we can. Okay, awesome. So, <laughs> so the internet uh, enabled exchange of information at a new scale. You didn't need to send DAVs anymore around or et cetera, a messenger. You can now send emails. Bitcoin or blockchain uh, allows the exchange of value. Celo <laughs> brought it to the potential 6 billion users 
on their phones. That's something that has to be digested because internet, it's something we had to digest for a while. Amazon got it right. Google beat out the other ones who got it out before Google. Twitter got it right. Well, they were only allowing us, I think, was it 60, correct me if I'm wrong, 60 <laughs> characters in the beginning. And then I think they went to 120. And now you can even send videos and photos and all that. I never got it, but that's how it is. Um, but it can shorten people want to talk too long or too much uh, to do shorter, which is the good side of it. Um, so that's a potential 6 billion users on their phones. You don't need a computer here. When we talk now about DeFi, I just go a little bit further from here, but I'm, I'm, I mean, Celo, let me not go further. <laughs> Celo, please, members, install, and I want to see the links here posted, Badly and anyone else on, on, from the team, please. I need to see the links of Alora posted here. I need to see the links um, posted, which actually can take everyone here from, from, from not just theory, but into practical. I always say, do your bit to get big. Huh? So do your bit, install the wallet, contact us. Hey, I have the wallet. What do I do? How do I get my first $5 on it or five Naira on it or 10 Ugandan, 10,000 10, Ugandan shilling on it? We help you. That's our job because on the one side, we share with you theory that you get to know it right. On the second side, we onboard you that you use it. Um, and another beautiful thing Oma did not talk about, currently Celo has a program whereby, Valora actually, whereby when you have, let me say $10 worth Celo or CUSD on, in your Valora wallet, Celo pays you weekly, which is nice, not monthly, not after six months, weekly. Celo pays you 50% annual, annual means a year, annual yield basically on your holding. You can calculate it down yourself, but if you basically put 1,000 on it, 50% is 500 of that one in a year you get from Valora in combination with Celo uh, uh, written positively or debited uh, on your Valora wallet. Don't hold it anywhere else unless it is a DFI product. So if you hold in the bank, you get maybe 0.75% in a year. So I don't understand people are holding money <laughs> or any value they call value uh, in any other form. I just had a presentation recently. It was not even a presentation. I visited some of my good old German friends. I've been working over 20 years ago. I've been working with them or oh, a bit more than 10 years actually. And um, I always share with them the crypto stuff. They all know me for it. So I told them about Celo. And not shortly, they were like, Michael, which account do we send the fiat? And how do I get the Celo? Even today, a message is my phone like that. Because they, they, they understood the value of Celo. And currently, it is undervalued. That's my stance. And you can quote me everywhere on it. Celo currently is totally undervalued. And I think for those who want to trade, go into it. For those who want to hold it, do it. Bitcoin was at one point also around 0 0.10 cents. And then it went now to 60,000 plus or even higher and a bit lower than that, but it's over $50,000. While you can get Celo now for $6, go for it. Hold in Valora, you want to sell it, come to Counter 25 Uganda, text us in our WhatsApp groups or Telegram. We're even on Discord. I don't know where we are not. Uh, maybe not yet on the moon. Uh, and you, we, get, we, 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 we exchange it. Either you buy from us or you sell to us. So either to Fiat or from Fiat, uh, we are there. So when we talk a little bit now about DFI, and I'm telling you, this slides you're going to see next week again, because I'm not going to rush it. But DFI stands for Decentralized Finance. I'm not seeing my chart here. Have I seen the Valora app link in the chat posted? Badly? Oh, Paddy? Is the Valora... Valora, please speak up. I'm not seeing it here. I want to see the Valora link here. Guys, don't no, let... 
Okay, I'm on I'm it. On I'm on it. I okay. muted myself. I'm on it. I was okay, no there. problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just don't want people to miss it out. And then they say you spoke about it, but you left us in the dark. We don't want to leave anyone here in the dark. So um, DeFi stands for decentralized finance. So it is basically a financial software built on the blockchain that can be pierced together like money Legos. I, I know you all know those Legos. So we have lending, we have... Um, we have, have never supported Can you mute yourself, please? And of the that is Caleb. I'm hearing the president speak, I'm glad, but this is not for for the Caleb. Please mute yourself. Mute all. Okay, sorry, I had to mute all. Um, I hope you still hear me. I hear manage. Okay, let me not mute all. We can hear. Um, you. Okay, thank you. So, um, they, they decentralized finance really allows different applications on it. One of it, the big one, is really lending. But we also have, for example, that you just stake your funds. And then automatically behind it, either is uh, governance, which uh, Omar talked briefly about it. So someone might not have uh, the, the tokens it takes to run uh, a, a, a node in the silo because you need silo for it. And the silo might be $5,000 in total to have before you can run a node. Uh, Omar, you can maybe correct me or push in a number here in the chat, uh, but you need a certain number of silo to run it. But I could have my 50 silos. Uh, Bartley could have 100. Maybe Eddie here has his 150 and, and so on and so forth. And then Brian here has maybe his 50 also. And then we can stake it. We can give it to a provider. And then he together has the pool. And with that pool, he can do votes. And he will be... Um, he will be paying us more or less some um, interest by using our tokens to do voting. Maybe he votes for something which he has more interest in or whatever. That could be one thing. Maybe he invests the sailors into another pool that actually does certain work. That could be running either another node or do a borrowing or lending or any other yield farming process, which I will talk about next week. Um, and that also, again, will allow us to get an interest paid. So that's one thing in DeFi, for example. Thank you, Omar. It's 20,000 sailors. So 20,000 sailors uh, right now multiplied uh, about $6 will be at about 100. Wow, you, this, you guys, you're expensive. Why did I not buy silo and it was $1? Okay, now it's hundred thirty thousand dollars. So um, for for one to hold it, mm, but for many, no problem because if one million people hold one dollar and they put it out there, we are good to go. If five of them hold hold two dollars, we're good to go. You can continue with the math behind it. So that's one application of DFI. Um, D, DFI is an endeavor to create a financial system that is open to everyone and maximizes trust trust and transparency through blockchain technology. I don't want to explain it further. I think it says it, it, says it all, which I'll talk about next week more. Um, so the last one I want to share is that DFI stands for decentralized, decentralized finance. I already know the most modern bank-like software solution on the blockchain. You can trust and store, store your money with it, which then works for you 24 seven, making you what? Profits. And I want to stop here. I think I've got you interested enough for DFI. And um, we're gonna have a whole session next week on it. Today, we really got a awesome, awesome, awesome presentation on uh, Salo. Uh, we got a nice intro even on uh, eNaira, which is awesome. I want to really um, challenge Uma and challenge Bartley. Which solution charges less fees? Salo transaction 
or a in era transaction? I please want to hear the answer next week latest and anyone who can also help us in the community to get the fact of the real cost from Inaira person A to Inaira person B, the fee. And the fee of Celo user or CUSD Valora user from, don't, don't tell me, oh, but I had staked and then I earned and then that's, that then on the fee goes into minus, so it didn't cost me anything. That one doesn't count, okay? Because that's possible. But uh, how much on Valora wallet A to Valora val wallet B is the fee between the two? Maybe you, if you're extra smart, like Eddie here, who I know, um, you can also let me know exchange to exchange. And then we really look at see the, uh, I mean, ab about the central bank digital currency benefits and something like Celo, which costs you 0 0.01. And it's the same for $50 or 10,000 Naira or 1 billion Naira or $1 billion, the same. So maybe you can give me um, some understanding there. So I want to stop here. We have gone already over time. We started a few minutes late, but still in time. So I really want to uh, say thank you to Uma, especially here also badly for the presentation on the Inaira. Um, I want to keep Uma really being with us because I want him to partition <laughs> this awesome stuff more and more. We're gonna have other speakers joining us. We already have others who have already uh, lined up to join us. Right now I'm a bit indecided. Is it a proper English? Not sure. Ich bin nicht entschieden of German. Um, I can make some do Portuguese and Chinese. Uh, if uh, we do webinars every week with you and bring on different speakers, or if we make a masterclass like last time and bring the number of speakers similar to what we had last time, but uh, for five full days, and then we make a break because after talking for many hours, uh, the speakers might be not available for work where they normally are at. So any questions, any comments? Um, I want to stop here and, and, and allow everyone to digest. I see the links here for the for the iOS version and for Google, both are out there. To the German community out there, für die Deutschen da draußen, Celo ist inzwischen auch auf Deutsch, was super ist. Uh, und ich weiß, wir haben demnächst einiges in dem Bereich zu tun. That was for the Germans. I'm informing them that Celo is now also in German because I had some German members who have joined Celo. They were buying from us Celo. I've, I've taken them through Celo and, uh, Celo, and they, were, they were figuring with the English version. And then I saw German is coming out and finally it's out, which is awesome. Valora is really doing a great job um, when it comes to the wallet. Um, so I hope to see even other transactions coming on because we have a huge French community, which is waiting and others, uh, I think Portuguese, I think I saw it. If not, we also have others joining from that page, but or some work there. So please, no excuses, get Celo on, come to Counter 25 or contact us through our uh, WhatsApp. We now have Celo available all the time. <laughs> I don't want to say 24 seven, but we have it now all the time at Counter 25 in Uganda. You can also contact us through our WhatsApps and Telegrams, etc. We also sell through our different channels, which we had to open during the COVID season. And then new solutions are about to come, which I don't want to announce yet, which gonna be also sale or driven uh, beside others. So um, just stay in the loop, stay tuned. And uh, thank you for joining. Let me hand over back to Bartley and, and big thanks for everyone who has joined today. Wow, <laughs> Mr. Michael, 
thank you for that wonderful presentation. And we look forward to the other parts next week. All right. So if we have any questions as we get um, all the discussions and all the points Mr. Michael um, just discussed on, you can ask in the chat box so that it can both rest more on it for us. All right. And um, while we do that, I want to say a very big thank you to our special guest, Umau, can you hear me? Yes, Bati. Okay, thank you so much for coming in to speak on this um, on this session. Like personally, I learned tons of things, and um, you actually opened up. You opened up several things that before now I was actually having um, um, a bit a bit of confusion in understanding it, but now I believe that. When next you still come on this session, you also um, um, shed more light on all those things that we need to know. All right. So I'm saying a very big thank you on behalf of um, the big to big community and team and my CEO. Thank you very much for tuning in this night. And to all the participants, a big thank you for joining us on this session. See you guys next week. So we've um, actually dropped the link to the Valor app for um, Google Play Store and App Store in the chat section, all right? So you can always download there. Um, get silo from us. You can do that by visiting our office at um, Kanta25 at Uganda or go across all our social media platform and shoot us a DM, DM already. And um, alternatively, you can come to us on WhatsApp, send um, any of the admins message on how to get started in buying Valora and how to make uh, maximize profits from it. All right. So all the way from Abuja, I say thank you, everyone. And uh, we are signing out now. Any final um, comments, Mr. Michael, before we call it a wrap? Yes, indeed, we should call it a wrap. Again, um, really big thanks. I think this was an awesome, awesome session. I really uh, hope we're going to have more of this, where we have uh, a great speaker like Uma also on. And also, it's some just awesome topic like this, I think it really gives us, gives everyone opportunity to join just by your phone, etc. So big thanks again. We want to see more of you next week. I know some of you have maybe not tuned in, but you'll be on our YouTube. It was live on YouTube. So uh, you, can, you can view everything on YouTube. I've shared the link in our WhatsApp group. I've shared the link also here. We shared it also in the Sailor group. So you can actually revisit it. And I would definitely do it because uh, I, I like the material. I like what Uma today spoke about and also the new drive, what's going on. And I, I keep hearing new keywords. I don't know what Uma has been doing, but uh, I really see there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on and, 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 and great news. So thank you for enlightening us on the Celo. Thank you also, badly. I really appreciate your presentation today about the Inaira. I think it just comes in timely because, um, and you, you're coming straight from Nigeria. If I was to present it, Uma will not look real, you know? We will look like we're just trying, but for you, you have all the backup for it. So thank you for that. Uh, just please get the, the, the feedback from the community really well. We want to hear more next week. I think I, for the next, next three weeks, I want to keep hearing about that in Naira because uh, I know that it is, the biggest rollout in Africa and even worldwide open, not China. China's bigger, but it's not open. <laughs> in Nigeria, we get at least to know a bit more. We don't have the Great Wall uh, there. Um, so I really want to hear next week more about it. I want to talk to the guys at the Central Bank. We already had some inputs from them, but I, need, I want to hear more. So that this call when we're on is a call where even Uma can tell us, not only us telling him that he learned something, uh, in, in that direction. So in anyone else for sure. So big thanks to everyone here. We made this happen. Thank you badly for pushing hard on this. Uh, we're going to see bigger numbers next week. Prepare for it. Um, and I'll be happy if Omar definitely is on next week, even if it's for a few minutes, because I know people will ask more questions because next week we have um, 
uh, decks. We, we're going to be talking about decentralized exchange, very briefly about centralized, but then we're going to decentralized exchange. We're going to be talking about trading. We're going to be talking about yield farming. We're going to be talking about CELO, especially. And we're going to talk about other assets on CELO blockchain. So we're going to have a lot of CELO. And I don't want that everyone shoots me with the questions and I have to get all the bullets on me. I want to share them at least with Omar. So if we have Omar on, I think it's the best. Same time, um, I believe uh, Badly will be still at the same location. For me, I don't know. I keep moving, but um, we're going to be even better set up than today, I believe, because the topic is going to be hot. Thank you, everyone, again, and wish you a nice evening. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks, Omar, again. Thanks, Badly. Thanks for everyone else on the call.